What's up y'all, Talon here. Today I'm back with another series of high-level rank battles featuring top teams in the Regulation E metagame. Today I have a team that was created and piloted by Colonel Vet, uh, the former 2018 uh, top four finisher. I uh, had a really cool team in that tournament with a uh, competitive Gothitelle when it was still clo closed team sheet, so um, no one knew that it wasn't basically a shadow tag. It was a bluff team. It also had like choice ban, self-destruct Snorlax, so really creative team builder. And uh, Yusei Matsuno is their actual name. Yusei was able to pilot this team to second place at a large Japanese grassroots tournament. Um, I also did see Yuki Zaninovich, um, a pretty prominent player. He was also able to get a uh, day two finish with this team at a European regional. I don't remember exactly which one it was. I think it might have been Lyle, but yeah, overall seeing some good finishes with the team. So I thought it would be a good idea to share it on the channel. Uh, I did take the time to share a... Uh, rental code with y'all. I made the EV spreads myself as well as uh, EV the team in game. So if you appreciate the effort it took to do that, please subscribe to the channel. It helps out a ton trying to hit uh, 2k followers uh, by the end of, or 2k subscribers by the end of the year. That's a that's the goal. But yeah, if you want to help out in that goal, please subscribe and let's get into a breakdown of the team now. So looking at this team from a top level, we have Rillaboom, Urshifu, Tornadus, Ogre Pond. It's like okay, yeah, these are all pretty standard. Uh, I believe they're all members of Andrew Ding's. Uh, undefeated at Sacramento team. He went like, what was it, 14-0 in Swiss with this team and got top eight at the event. But yeah, essentially really good combination of Pokemon. Tornadus with Rain Dance sets up an incredibly powerful uh, Terra Water Surging Strike for the Urshifu. And then the Grassy Terrain from the Rillaboom sets up Ogre Pond to be able to go for Swords Dance. Grassy Glide, uh, plus one, uh, plus the, like if you get to plus two on the Ogre Pond with the Swords Dance and then go for a Terra Fire, the Priority Grassy Glides are suddenly taking knockouts you wouldn't expect. It's really incredible damage, and especially if you have Tailwind on the field, the IV Cudgels are doing insane damage as well. So a really common Tailwind combination for the first four, and then we look at the bottom, and it's Grimmsnarl Gudra, which almost looks like it's copied and pasted from an entirely different team. Grimmsnarl going for screens while Gudra goes for the shelter, uh, basically just trying to buff its defenses up, and with leftovers and Grassy Train healing on the Rillaboom, those you do kind of see together just because Gudra doesn't really want to use life to as healing. The passive healing from the Grassy Surge and the leftovers is really appreciated. Let's you go for shelters and set up body presses to knock out anything that isn't Flutter Main and then Heavy Slam to knock out Flutter Main. There is a gap for things like uh, Goldengo, Sinistra, really any ghost type that isn't weak to Heavy Slam, you do want to be forcing Terra out of that. But yeah, it's a very interesting combination of Pokemon at a top level. Diving in a little deeper though, the Rillaboom, obviously the Grassy Terrain pairs well with the Gudra and the Ogre Pond, uh, but really the Grimmsnarl, it appreciates the healing and the Urshifu. You're able to run it pretty bulky on a team like this with the screens. Uh, it has Conkledur comparable bulk, so with the screens, it's actually starting to take hits really impressively well. So with Rain Dance up, if you get a screen up as well, the Urshifu is doing incredible damage, so I do like that combination a fair bit. Uh, but yeah, diving deep into each individual Pokemon, the Rillaboom is Terra Fire with high horsepower, just because uh, once you've gone for the Terra on Ogre Pond, you do appreciate being able to hit things like uh, Heatran for super effective damage. That's definitely very, very appreciated. And the rest is pretty standard. It's an Assault Vest set. The Urshifu is really standard outside of the U-turn that I have not seen on any Urshifu that have not been Choice Scarf, but you can imagine um, if you're going for the Ogre Pond Swords Dance mode, if you have Urshifu on the field and you don't want to hard switch out into Rillaboom, you can kind of just like spiky shield on the Ogre Pond, go for U-turn, get some positive chip, and then switch out into the Rillaboom, go for fake out Swords Dance or fake out attack, and you're in a really good spot from that. Tornadus is a covert cloak set with Terra Steel instead of Terra Ghost, so just prioritizing taking uh, basically reduced damage from something like an Icicle Crash from a Chen Pao can be really, really nice. Outside of that, Tailwind, Bleak Wind, Rain, Dance, and Taunt, all very good, and the Ogre Pond I have already covered the set. Uh, but yeah, it is a Sword Stance set. The Grim Snarl has some interesting options. It's Terra Poison instead of something like Terra Ghost. So prioritizing, not really... I guess since you have Covert Cloak on the Tornadus, you're not really expecting Fake Out on lead, but you are have no option to basically Terra out of Fake Out and get a screen up. Instead, you go Terra Poison to be able to live things like um, Terra Fairy Moonblast. Light Screen and Reflect are your main moves you'll be clicking most of often. But once you have clicked those, you can go for Thunder Wave. You can actually click Thunder Wave even earlier. If you ID a threat to something like Ogre Pawn or Gudra that you'd really, really like to be outspeeding later in the battle, um, as your opponent expects you to go for Reflect or Light Screen, you can Thunder Wave that and pave the way for later. Uh, and oftentimes, if you get a Paralysis on them, you're able to go for the Reflect and Light Screen anyways, like one turn offset. So that's definitely always very positive. Spirit Break, 
Of course, with Grimstar's very high special or very high attack stat, he's doing pretty solid damage even um, without much attack investment. Uh, and obviously the lowering of special attack guaranteed with that as a secondary effect is definitely very appreciated as well. Last up is of course the Gudra. So this Gudra is not Sap Sipper. We've opted for Shell Armor here just so that you're not weak to a, for example, Urshifu Dark or Urshifu Water Surging Strikes after you've gone for the Terra or before you've gone for the Terra in the Dark Types case. Uh, this one is Terra Fairy, so you're able to basically remove your weakness to fighting type attacks, which I think is pretty relevant just because the main way people deal with Gudra is oftentimes preserving their Chen Pao, uh, going for like Terra Ghost or something like that, and then going for really strong Sacred Swords. But if you have your Terra Fairy, they can't really do that because although you'll be ignoring the Shelter boost, you're not able to ignore the natural high defense stat of Gudra and the basically resistance from the typing of Terra Fairy. So that's definitely uh, a smart Terra there. After a couple Shelters, your body presses start to do incredible damage. Although you don't have the stab damage multiplier that um, Como as Hisuian Gudra's damage is still really incredible. Decently high defense stat, uh, and most importantly, the high special defense stat means you're able to stick around a little longer than Como traditionally is able to. Overall, this is a very interesting team. I think the main challenge for new players using this team is figuring out exactly when you should be going for the Tailwind mode, when you should be going for the Swords Dance Ogre Pawn, and when you should be going for the Gudra defensive setup. Um, I think oftentimes the Tailwind mode is going to be the strongest, but if you see something that it might benefit a little more from slow play. You can just go for the Gudra or the Grimstar, lead something like Urshifu or Ogre Pond, uh, go for a U turn of Swords Dance if you want to. I think one underrated combination is actually the Grimstar, Ogre Pond, Urshifu, Rillaboom boom combo. So you're going for screens early, you're trying to get some damage off with the Urshifu, um, but ultimately you're just setting up screens, slowing things down with Thunder Wave so that your Urshifu and your Ogre Pond can sweep pretty effectively, while your opponent might expect for uh, a more offensive option with the Tornadus or a more dedicated defensive option with Grimstall Gudra. If you kind of mix those together, you can really catch people off guard and play a very balanced, um, very stable game plan. Moving on from there though, if you enjoyed the videos, please subscribe to the channel. And with all that being said, let's get into the battles now. Wow, up against number one on the ladder. I think I've seen this team before. Um... I haven't featured on the channel, but I know it's like obviously very, very defensively oriented. Uh, two Gudras, I think unfortunately they probably have like will o -Wisp pressure on their team, so I can't actually answer it that well. I actually like Grimstarl a lot here to be able to go for Thunder Waves and kind of limit the amount of turns they get to have. That seems pretty valuable. Um, I don't really want to get will o -Wisp right off the bat by their Dragonite, truthfully. Their... Yeah, their Dragapult, I feel like it's that set. So I could go Taunt, and I think Taunt makes a lot of sense for me here. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, they probably have crit control on the Gudra as well. Like Shout Armor, so I can't crit through that. I'm not sure if I'll be able to out stack them on Shelter. Also, Sinistra will just beat me if I try and do that. So I might actually have to go for a more offensive route and just like fake out, like stop it with Taunt from getting that up and then go for like Swords Dance. I'm sure they've like played this team before. It's not crazy. Um, Yuki brought this to, I believe, a regional did day two with it. It also got pretty, like Colonel Vet got a, like I think second place at that big Japanese grassroots tournament so yeah it's not a they'll know a bit of what this team has going on <clears throat> so they have ting lu plus the dragapult fair enough i think i'm just gonna taunt you they might have rocky helmet sinistra which is what i'm worried about a bit um i kind of want to get some damage off into the pult I could u-turn it But I think getting, like, I'm not really struggling for damage onto the Ting Lu, so I'm actually going to Surging Strike and Taunt the Dragapult. They do switch out. And what's coming in? Is it a Water Resist with a Rocky Helmet? We Taunt the Dragapult, so no will o -Wisp coming out from them. They could go for an attack, of course, but could be like Banded Dragon. Yeah, they do go for will o -Wisp. okay. 
So we sniff that out, and we get a bunch of damage off into this guy. Cursed body. Okay, fair enough. I think that's fine, though, just because we're going to pivot out. Like, we're going Bleak Wind for sure this turn, and then pivoting out into the... Um, we're pivoting out into the Ogre Pawn. Yeah, so... This is just kind of like seeing Dragapult, ob obviously its biggest strength is its offense, but in Dynamax formats where that offense wasn't overpowering, we saw lots of support sets, so I kind of like sniffed out, okay, defensive team like this, there's not really much opportunity for ban Dragapult, like there's no Chen Pao, so they're switching out the Dragapult, they're going to take um, some damage on the Ting Lu if that's what's coming in, and it's the Cresselia, that's a really big U-turn. Like, that's super valuable damage. We hit the Bleak Wind on the Sinistra, and <clears throat> no Gudra, notably. I mean, lower Crest's speed, uh, which is fine. U-turn does a... Oh my goodness, so much damage there. At this point, the Ogre Pawn damage is looking pretty crazy. Yeah. U-turn, obviously, very, very unconventional there, but works amazingly catching the Cresselia or the Tinglu on switch in there. They go Shadow Ball. Okay. That's cool. Uh, does a lot of damage. But I think... I could Taunt here or I could... Like, Bleak Wind is tempting for sure. I think I like Bleak Wind Horn Leech into the Cresselia. Oh, I'm not Horn Leech. I'm Grassy Clad. Okay. I think I'll just Ivy Cudgel Bleak Wind that then. Like, the damage isn't that necessary. I think I have what I need on the Sinistra. Strength Sap will be annoying, for sure. But I think if I, like, one of them has to Terra here to survive the turn. And if it's Sinistra, great. I probably beat it with the Urshifu in the back. And if it's Cresselia, great. I might even knock that out anyways. It is Dragon Terra. Um, so, that's a pretty good Terra for them, actually. I can't damage that so substantially, and Strength Sap is going to be a little annoying to handle. They go Rage Powder, but I didn't go for the Terra there, so it's not going to affect the Ogre Pawn. And we get the Ivy Cudgel into the Crest, and Bleak Wind, if it double connects, should win us the game here. And we do double connect. Brings the Sinistra super low, to a point where I can knock it out with anything, and we lower its speed, just uh, to add insult to injury. So this is the issue with, like, really defensive teams against Tailwind. If the Tailwind player is, like, Playing even remotely with their hands on the wheel, a lot of the time, it like gets very difficult, I think. Um, at this point, Rain Dance probably just wins me the game. Like, I'll always knock out the Ting Lu. I kind of just want to go Tailwind, set it up against the Dragapult, and then Ivy Cudgel the Sinistra. I think they might just forfeit, yeah. Yeah, we pretty much 4-0'd them. Uh, they might have been able to take a KO, KO on the Ogre Pawn or their Torn, but they're never beating Rillaboom. Uh, plus Urshfu in the back after getting the Surging Strike on their Cursed Body Dragapult. So yeah, pretty happy with that game, taking a win off number one on the ladder in a pretty convincing fashion, but I can't lie, some of that was just like not biting into the obvious Rocky Helmet Sinistra plus will o Dragapult combination. Because otherwise, right, the, the option's super obvious. I just go for Tailwind, Surging Strike, take the free damage on like what I expect to be a banded Dragonite that can't knock out my Urshifu, but in the case where it is um, Will-O-Wisp Dragonite, Ting Lu's not really threat- will o -Wisp Dragapult, Ting Lu's not really threatening me that turn, so I can just pretty safely Surging Strike, taunt the Dragapult. Um, if it's not defensive, that's going to be a 2-hit KO. If it is defensive, like they're- what are they- they can't set up a screen, they could go for a breaking swipe, so what? So yeah, pretty happy with the play in that one. And we're able to take a win on number one on the ladder. Okay, up against Wheezy featuring, I believe that's pretty close to Andrew Zhang's uh, Sacramento winning team, but the Sinistra is in place of the choice Bex Fluttermane. I think Gudra is actually pretty well primed against that with Terra Fairy. Well, Ironhead Como is actually some, no, it's not even a concern at all. And they don't have a defensive Terra to body press like we do for them. So if we can deal with the Intimidate and Knockoff, on their team, we should be pretty well primed. Uh, Urshifu is a pretty good way to do that. I like Swords Dance, Ogre Pawn a fair bit, plus Rillaboom on lead, I think. Uh, not necessarily. 
That's actually not that good. I think Gudra definitely coming. I could go for screens right off the bat, which is compelling, I think. Yeah, I think that's a good route to go. Yeah, this threatens a lot of their Pokemon on a lead, forces some Terras out. If I can Thunder Wave their Arcanine, they'll actually lose to the Gudra, I think. And then the last is, I think, going to be the... <clears throat> Let's see. Ogre Pond's tempting because it beats a lot of their defensive Pokemon, but I think the fake out pressure might be valuable. Like Ogre Pond beats both the Sinistra and the... Yeah, I kind of forgot about the Sinistra. I do lose pretty hard to that. Yeah, that was a, I think that was a mistake. I think I probably should have gone the Ogre Pond route, but it is what it is. I think it's still playable. Como Rillaboom is theirs, so... That's fine by me. Um, I think I'm going to go right into the Gudra here. And go for a... Whoops. Lost connection. What the heck? I've lost connection of my Joy-Con. Sorry, just one second. Sorry about that. Uh, basically, my Joy-Cons weren't responding, so I just connected them directly to the Switch. They and switched out to my Gudra. They go Grassy Glide, and I set up Reflect, which is, I think, good for me. Um, and they go for Iron Defense. Okay, fair enough. Feels like a even enough trade to me. They're going to be doing a lot of damage with Body Press if I do not go for the Terra, but I don't think they have great ways to punish me going for Terra. Because I have the Reflect up, Iron Head's going to do ex increasingly less damage. Okay, new set of Joy-Cons, I'm just going to dock those in and then... Yeah, okay, we get they go high horsepower, they do negligible damage, and they protect their combo. They could have been Taunt, that would have been worse than High Horsepower. Okay, I'm playing with two colored Joy-Cons, this is weird, but yeah. Everything went right there, I'll probably cut around all of it, but essentially I was able to get that up. And we're going to go for another Shelter. They're withdrawing Rill Rillaboom, not really a lot of pressure coming out there. I think the Thunder Wave on the... oh, that's super fine. Thunder Wave on the Como is going to be nice in the late game when it comes down to that. But Tyranitar is usually max speed on this team. I won't be able to do a ton of damage to it with my... They'll be able to knock off. Very relevant, but yeah. At this point, we're outpacing the Como. We're resisting their body presses. And if they go for Terra Steel to do increased Iron Head damage, we'll always beat them. So kind of flying in the face of what you know. The Como generally being a better Iron Defense user. But in the Iron Defense mirror, the Terra Fairy Gudra definitely a little better. It is going to be a lot of turns of uh, passive damage, though, with the leftovers and grassy terrain healing everybody, and Sandstorm chipping us all down. I remember Don uh, Donald Smith, like he piloted a similar team to top uh, 32 or top 16 uh, with the Gudra Sandstorm or the Sandstorm Como stuff, and his main complaint was, "Yeah, I mean, just waiting all that time is annoying." Um. They're probably gonna... Do I care if they Terra their Tyranitar? I think I'm gonna go Thunder Wave Body Press into the Tar. Just because I'm not really doing much else and they're probably gonna go for Terra on it. So if they do go for the... If they don't go for Terra, I knock them out. If they do... Oh, they don't. Okay, that's fair. Going for the Terra Steel. Uh, we're now neutral in Shelters, which is fine, but... I guess I waste my turn on Thunder Wave a little into the Tyranitar, but they're still trying to flinch me, would be my guess, which is fine by me. Yep, there's the Rock Slide, gonna do pretty little damage to the Gudra, and they can't even crit me. They do flinch though, okay. So, fully wasted my turn, and they go for Iron Head, which should do, what, yeah, 12 damage-ish. The only thing that's annoying about that turn in the grand scheme is that they get a flinch, because we're just healing most of the damage off, and it's just like another turn where we have to take all the passive damage and the passive chip. 
Um, it does look really good for the Gudra though, given we're shell armor, they can't crit us, we're at speed and Como. Let's wait a turn to switch. Yeah, we want to wait a turn to get the grassy terrain up. I can go for Reflect, I don't really see the value out of it. I think I'll go Light Screen just in case they have something spooky in the back. And I'll go Body Press into the Tyranitar. So long as they have the Tyranitar on the field, they have a way to win by just like rock sliding and making sure my Gujar never moves. But um, as soon as I knock them out, yeah, knock off, doing no damage, I think that was kind of a misplay on their part. Um, just the damage output is a little too much now. Because if my... Like, yes, I'm not getting Leftovers healing anymore, and Sandstorm is going to be chipping me, but your Como is paralyzed, you're not going to be moving some of the turns. I have Grassy Terrain. Well, I mean, they don't know I have Rillaboom, so they don't know I can activate it. <clears throat> but Urshifu's in the back, I can beat your Como, so really at this point it's just... Uh, pardon me, my voice is getting scratchy. <clears throat> so all I have to do is basically get the Urshifu in, and then I- oh, Arcanine is totally fine. <coughs> Sorry. Let me drink some water. Feeling parched. Yep, so this is the value of Thunder Wave on the Grimmsnarl. <coughs> we can use it as basically speed control to go for Thunder Wave and body press the Arcanine before they can go for a Will-O-Wisp and basically limit our damage output. Yep, and we do take that knockout. Intimidate affecting the attack stat, not the defense stat, so we can still do our big shelter body press damage. And another paralysis. That's why I went for it. Wasn't really caring about the speed on the combo so much. I mean, it's nice they can't flinch me with Iron Head. But yeah. With two shelters up, we're at plus four, Rillaboom's not doing a ton, and... If we stall out the terrain, Urshifu beats the Rillaboom, it's looking pretty bad for them. Yep, we're just gonna go for a Thunder Wave on the Rillaboom. Turns out we never needed Reflect, but yeah, that we weren't doing a lot else that turn. Yeah, they do cancel out, so we did finally get a Guja game. I feel like we got really close on one of them, where it was just about to clutch up. Uh, with the combination of the Ivy Cudgel, plus the Guja was able to beat a, Gujar, uh, a Goldengo, but then we just got crit out. Uh, a couple turns in a row, so yeah, really happy about that. Definitely you can see the value of Gudra, like, especially paired next to the Grimmsnarl with the screens, it becomes so tanky, so if they're not able to take a knockout on the Grimmsnarl the first turn, if you get one or both screens up and a couple Thunderways off, it's just like so difficult to contend with. Wow, really interesting team from there. First time I've seen Garganacle in a minute, and it's actually super good against Gudra. Uh, but yeah, Cresselia, Heatran, Garganacle, Sableye, Iron Hands, and Sinistra. Could be Screens, could be Will-O-Wisp, Encore, all pretty threatening options. Encore, probably the thing I'd be most worried about with all the setup on my team. Will-O-Wisp would be annoying, of course. Um, I might try and get some Screens up. They're really not going to be doing any damage at all. Body Press. Like, it could... like. You'd think Salt Cure Wide Guard recover on the Garganacle, but it could easily be um, Terra Water or Terra Dragon plus um, Iron Defense Body Press. That was like an early set. So I think I want to threaten them early with the Urshifu. Hmm. Might want to get a Swords Dance up, honestly. I think if I can get a Swords Dance up, I can actually go Grassy Glide and circumvent the Encore, which is valuable for sure. And then last Mon could set up Rain Dance pretty successfully to sweep them late game. They do have a Trick Room component of their team, so Taunt could have some value. I think I'm going to go Torn just because the Gudra isn't super valuable against the Sinisha. Yeah, that's like the big issue with Gudra. If your opponent has a Ghost type that isn't Flutter Main, that you can't hit very effectively with Heavy Slam then it's usually going to get benched or you have to really make a dedicated game plan to force the Terra out of your opponent so that you actually can get the body presses on them. <coughs> Cress plus Ursh? Yeah, Cress plus Guy. Okay. 
That's fine. Um, I don't really want to get Will-O-Wisps. So I'm actually going to go directly to Rillaboom and go for a Swords Dance. Yeah, I could also get Fake Out Moonblasted or something silly, so I don't really want to leave myself susceptible to that. Um, fake Out, definitely an option from the Sableye, in which case a U-turn would have been much more valuable, but I think with all the setup on their, on their team, yeah, I don't want to lose the main damage force source against something like an Iron Defense set. I guess Trick Room... Thunderweight. Wait, do you... Did I get the Swords Dance off yet? That Cresselli is so fast, what? Are you serious? How fast was that? Yeah, I mean, that's like a really big issue because... Oh god, okay. 154, are you Choice Scarf? Cresselia with Thunder Wave? I think they are. That's ridiculous, okay. Um, I don't have U-Turn. Wow, that's super annoying, okay. 156. Sableye could outspeed me here, like, straight up, and that's annoying. Um, I kind of want to high horsepower their switch. I'm pretty sure their choice guard for Sally. I don't think they can get that fast, so I'm going to go Grassy Glide onto the Sableye. Hope that I outspeed and go for a high horsepower on the Crest. I'm pretty sure that has to be choice scarf. Um, so I'm high horsepowering because Heatran is the obvious switch into me. And if we can tag that on switch in, it's super high value. It is Sinister though, okay. Weren't going to get a ton of that value out of that anyway, so not the end of the world. And they do go for the Encore. It's not like that great for me. Um, like Ivy Cudgel still would be valuable. But it's definitely better that I get this off instead of the alternative. Um, yeah. At this point, we're really not threatening a lot of damage into their... Yeah, Macha Gotcha is an issue for our Urshifu. We're probably going to have to switch out the Ogre Pond later in the game. I think I'm going to go Torn here. So I can tank a Macha Gotcha and also... Yeah, I mean, if Heatran comes in here, fair enough. But I think the Bleak Wind is going to be pretty valuable onto the Sinistra. Urshifu at this point is looking pretty solid. If I can tag the Sinistra with some damage. And they detect the Sableye, that's a very passive play. I'm super okay with that. Because it'll leave their Sinistra open next turn to Bleak Wind plus Grassy Glide. Uh, they go Strength Sap, fair enough. I'm gonna heal some damage. Or not heal anything, but... Lower my attack stage to plus one. If it's Heatran in the back... Would they have brought it in that turn? I don't think so. Like Sinister's just all around a safer play for them. So I'm gonna go Bleak Wind. And at this point... Grassy Glide into... Sableye is something I could do. Like, even Heatran isn't tanking that, necessarily. Would Sinistra be Strength Sap Protect, potentially? But I feel like a lot of the time they don't carry that. So I'm gonna go Grassy Glide into the Sinistra. Like, if it's like a Iron Hands or something that switches in, I would have gotten a lot of value at the, this Grassy Glide, but it is the Cresselia, so could attack that pretty aggressively, but they are going for a Terra on their Sinistra, so... If it's not a Dragon Terra, we have pretty good odds to hit this for a lot of damage. Fairy Terra, totally fine with that. Okay, yeah, we aren't paralyzed, so shooting pretty lucky from the field on our paralysis chances, and we miss neither Bleak Wind, which is super valuable. Um, if they go for Macha Gacha, it's not going to do a lot of damage. They go for Calm Mind. That's really, really good for me, because I tag that for a ton of damage. We're looking pretty solid. Um, they can Strength Sap again, of course. Have, has my Encore ended yet? It is not. They can't threaten me for a lot of damage just yet. I don't want to switch out the Rillaboom on this turn because I want to refresh the Grassy Terrain. I feel like Taunt into the Crest is fine. They could be going for Icy Winds, of course. Uh, should I go Tailwind? I'm not sure. 
think Bleak Wind Taunt, like Taunt is fine here. And I kind of want some damage into the Cresselia. Like the Sinister is kind of a sitting duck. Oh, okay, they switch, fair enough. Yeah, I mean, Sinister is basically useless at this point if they don't get up Trick Room. And Iron Hands is last, okay. Are you gonna be Thunder Wave, Scarf, Trick Room, Cresselia? Maybe, it's not impossible. We finally don't move, which is fair play. I think we got the value out of this we wanted to, and they go for a trick onto the Torn. But because we move first that turn with the Taunt, we're not going to be locked into Bleak Wind. Um, Trick, Thunder Wave, what else could you have? I mean, they don't really have anything to take an Ivy Cudgel. But I don't want to commit my Terra just yet, that'd be really aggressive. I think I want to set up Rain Dance so that I can knock pretty much anything out with the Urshifu. Well, not just yet. Right. I think I get some value out of bringing out Rillaboom on the field and going for Ivy Cudgel this turn. Uh, which is stronger? 55 times 1.3. It's like 70-ish. Yeah, Ivy Cudgel's doing more, of course. Shouldn't even have to run that calculation, but yeah. You're plus one on the Ivy Cudgel still, so it shouldn't knock out the um, Iron Hands if we connect, but it'll be in range of probably a double Grassy Glide next turn, and definitely, uh, I would say, a Wood Hammer. They go Thunder Wave, obviously not going to connect onto either of my status party members, and we go for the Ivy Cudgel, still outspeeding the uh, Iron Hands, interestingly enough, and they go for the Drain Punch, which... Doing a lot of damage, but nothing crazy. Enough that we can threaten Fake Out Ivy Cudgel next turn for a knockout. I don't think Psychic knocks us out. And the Grassy Terrain healing is definitely appreciated. I don't think we'll knock them out now is the issue. Um, but we're really just driving towards Urshifu in the back, I think. The Paralysis makes this a little tricky. Yeah, I want to knock out the Iron Hands. It's really the only damage source they have into... Okay, yeah, good play. I think they're sacking the Sableye here. Yep, fair enough. Give an eye out speed. I was basically trying to cover the Paralysis by fake-outing the Iron Hands, but they punish me reasonably hard by going in the opposite direction and just switching out the Iron Hands. Um, because I could have probably knocked out the Sableye, but okay. I think the Paralysis is good for me. Because the damage output from the Sableye is not really going to be crazy. I think Woodhammer could knock out the Sableye. They do have Encore though, so I don't want to fall for that. Don't want to get Encored very badly, so I'm going to go Ivy Cudgel into the Cresselli. It's kind of get, getting annoying. I want to knock that out. Yeah, I think this is... This, the team we're using, this type of team is especially strong against defensive teams just because you do have so much offense, you have like a fair amount of bulk, so you're not really worried about their speeds. They go Ice Beam, doesn't look like it's a 3 at KO and we don't move because of Paralysis, but that's okay. They're going to heal a bit on the Sableye. I think I'm going to go Bleak Wind. Is the Paralysis an issue? Potentially, potentially not. Given their back is Sinistra, I don't think this, any of this really matters. Yeah, I think Bleak Wind plus... Oh, okay, Disable. Yeah, I completely forgot about that. I thought they'd go for the Fake Out. So we don't knock them out, unfortunately. We are locked in here. So this is, I guess, where the combination of their team starts to make sense. Where they have the Trick, they have Encore, they have Disable, so they kind of have all the components they need. Now that I have the Choice Scarf from the Torn, they could fairly safely go for a Disable. So with that in mind, I'm going to switch about a bit and go for... I think a Grassy Glide on the Sableye. They're not doing a lot to my Ogre Pond, but with the Paralysis... With the Paralyses... The damage is starting to stack up while I'm not taking Knockout, so... I do take the Sableye before it can Encore anything. Because I outspeed them, I could have gone for another Grassy Glide and just hoped I didn't get Paralysis. But if they, I do get paralyzed, they get another Ice Beam off, they can disable my Torn, and that's all bad news, I would say. 
but we do get the Rillaboom in here a little earlier than I would have liked. Yeah, because Grass leaves the field now, and Grassy Glide is basically going to be doing half the damage in Ivy Cudgelwood. Uh, okay. Sin Sinistra does come out. That is Heatproof Sinistra, because they didn't get Hospitality, which is interesting. Uh, okay. Like, I can switch out into the Urshifu, but I don't want it to get frozen or anything like that. I think I'm just going to double into the Sinistra with Fake Out Grassy Glide. I went for Fake Out just because I didn't... Oh, okay, Covert Cloak. Definitely should have gone for Woodhammer then. Alright, back to full on the Sinistra. This game just became a little interesting. Um, yeah, they get a crit there, doesn't knock me out. I'm, I think, at the point where I get more value out of my Ogre Pawn with it not being on the field. Like, this game has been going for a while. This might be a timer game, truthfully. Um, I think I'm going to go into the Torn here. Yeah, I think the value of my... Ogre Pawn is actually that it's my that I've taken a KO on them in the Sableye, and they haven't on me, so even if they have the HP advantage, I can play a little more aggressively. Yeah, Woodhammer probably would have knocked them out that turn. Yeah, I can play more aggressively now. They can Lunar Blessing, I think. Their Ice Beam, Scarf, yeah, I think they can. Are they going to freeze me? They are not. I think I can taunt Woodhammer the Sinistra. Bleakwind probably knocks them out. Bleakwind Woodhammer would be pretty close. I could go Terra Steel, survive some hits. I don't think that's great. I think Terra Water should close things out for me. So I think I want to taunt their Sinistra. Make sure they can't go for another Strength Sap. That's how they're going to get the bulk of their healing. Macha Gacha at plus one will be healing a fair amount of HP, but not nearly as much as um, as they will need. Like, they, they won't be able to get full HP, and they did go, did go for the Strength Sap there. Lunar Blessing comes out. We are kind of forced to switch out. Um, I think I might have to eat my words here and let the Sack happen on the Ogre Pawn, because I can't really afford to get Thunder Waved here. And I can't switch in the Urshifu because I don't yet have a knockout. Oops. Not there, buddy. I could reflect, ref I could refresh Grassy Terrain. I don't think that's correct. So yeah, going out into the Ogre Pawn. They made this a lot harder than I was expecting based on the first couple of turns. Um, but yeah, they, they've played it pretty well. Unfamiliarity with Sableye caught me on a turn with the Disable and yeah, a couple Paralysis. Okay, interesting move from them. I think this is all fine. Get another Wood Hammer off. They're not going to be healing a ton of damage. We get a crit though. That's notable for sure. And they go for the Macha Gacha. Connect on both. And they can't burn my Rillaboom, obviously. Um, Woodhammer's going to be a knockout into their... Their fella there. I'm not sure if we outspeed max speed Cress on our Urshifu, so they might have an option to Thunder Wave us, or go for some other stuff. I could bring this in, be guaranteed Bleak Wind... They can't really heal a lot just yet. And we're a pretty bulky Urshifu, so I don't think Wild Charge is a knockout. Um, but I don't think I let them go for Fake Out just yet. Yeah, I think I'm going to go Detect Woodhammer. They're probably faking out, Fake Outing the Rillaboom or switching out the Sinistra. Um, their damage would probably be relevant on the... Yeah, they are switching out. 
Uh, I think Woodhammer should knock them in range of Surging Strike. The problem is the speed on the Cresselia. They go Protect, or they don't go for Fake Out, so I could have probably knocked with the Iron Hands there, but... Yeah, okay. Um, I think we're fine, actually. It depends on the Cresselia's speed stat. Cresselia's max speed is what? I think you can be EV to outspeed um, the base 130s, or like whatever Fluttermane is. I think that's 135, so they can hit 206, which means they can hit at least 137, 136-ish. My Urshifu is not that fast, and I'm pretty sure I don't have a knockout. If, then, if they Thunder Wave, I think I'd probably lose. So should I go Bleak Wind? Yeah, I think I have to go for the Bleak Wind. I don't want to lock into Rain Dance just yet. I think I go Surging Strike into you. Hope I don't get crit. Hope I'm faster. If I'm slower, they still have to go for a Thunder Wave Paralysis to win. And if I hit the Bleak Wind and lower their speed, it should be a guaranteed wind if I double hit. But that's like only a 60. Like I have to double hit the Bleak Wind and lower speed, which is very low odds. We do miss a Bleak Wind onto the, hopefully not the Iron Hands. Okay. We are offensive Urshifu with Mystic Water. We should knock out their Iron Hands here. We miss the Cresselia, which is kind of annoying, but it is what it is. But I think we hit the one we needed to there. Yep. So there was an 80% chance that Rain Dance that Bleak Wind was a better chance than Rain Dance there, and we do get that. Um, Cresselia probably has to go for a Thunder Wave, which is totally fine. Three minutes until battle end. I think so long as we hit through the Paralysis with Aqua Jet, we beat the Sinistra, or hit the Bleak Wind. So I think we put the odds in our favor here, even though it was like a pretty weird battle. Uh, I think we had the tools and did what we had to, so now we just have to get pretty lucky. Or not get pretty unlucky. We do hit the Aqua Jet. With Ice Beam confirmed their only move on Cresselia, we should guaranteed win this on time, if not by knockout. Yeah, but they played very well, um, switching when they had to, even after they'd taken a pretty big loss on the turn that Sinister went for Calm Mind as I double into it. Yeah, there is the Thunder Wave. Playing their odds, fair enough, but now we just go for Surging Strike. If we connect, we win. Uh, I guess, in theory... No, I mean, Ice Beam Crit never does enough for them to win, and they do cut the connection. Okay. That's exciting. Yeah, not sure why. They must have just been frustrated. I mean, the longer a battle is, if you lose it, it definitely feels like you committed more and it hurts a little more, but you kind of just have to learn to accept it on those close battles. Okay, up against Rillaboom. Um, okay, Rillaboom, Iron Hands, Goldengo, Dragonite, Milotic, Landorus. So when I see this team, I'm like, okay, three pivot Pokemon in Landorus, Rillaboom, Iron Hands, Goldengo, probably nasty plot. Um, Roaring Moon could be Tailwind or Dragon Dance, and then the Milotic might even be Coil Hypnosis, so I gotta be on the on guard for that. Uh, this is a team where Screens on Grimmsnarl is valuable, but I'm not really doing that much with it. Okay. Gudra would actually handle their team outside of the Goldengo, so maybe I can drive towards a Gudra endgame if I can knock out Goldengo. The issue is Terra Dragon Goldengo is quite annoying for me. Um, yeah. I think I like Reflect here. That seems pretty valuable. Logar Pond in the back seems good. To set up Swords Dance, and then... I think I'm actually... Like, Rillaboom doesn't seem that good against... Well, it does set me up against Demilotic pretty well. And the Grassy Glide pressure is solid. Oops. 
I don't know if we got that in, but I went with Gudra. Just because my Lodic is definitely good, but I feel like in the face of the Ogre Pond, they're always going to Terra on the turn. I'm going to go for Grassy Clyde anyways. So I won't actually get value out of the Rillaboom. I'll like force them to Terra, but okay. Yeah, Iron Hands plus the plus the Roaring Moon is fine. We see their Protosynthesis and it's going to be the Speed. Okay, I think that's better than Attack for me. Reflect is pretty safe. I don't want to get hit by Acrobatics just yet. Um, they could go for the Terra Acrobatics here. I think I'm actually going to pivot maybe right into the Gudra. On that... Knockoff is going to be annoying in the late game. Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe I can protect. Yeah, I think I might go... I just don't want to take a really big acro this turn yet. And we haven't really positioned the Gudra. Like, the issue with the knockoff on the Roaring Moon is it actually... There's no healing, there's no life due on this Gudra, so it actually makes all damage permanent into... Okay. That's interesting. They don't go for Fake Out, they go for Breaking Swipe. Okay. Maybe that's Heavy Slam. That would make sense. Uh, yeah, it could be Breaking Swipe, Heavy Slam. That would make sense. Yeah, good damage from them. Um, hmm. I don't love that for me. I think I'm going to go out... Yeah, they're... Good play there. Could have gone Spirit Break for pretty substantial damage there. Didn't go for it, so mistake on that turn. I think I'm just going to go U-turn onto the Roaring Moon. They could go Tailwind Wild Charge, which definitely gets them a lot of damage, but I think the U-turn damage is valuable into their um, Roaring Moon. At this point, I'm actually not aiming for... Like, what I'm aiming for isn't necessarily the Gudra sweep, but the body press damage into the Roaring Moon is what I might be aiming for. Um, let's see what they go for. It's probably, like, Wild Charge. I don't necessarily think I should reveal. Like, I'm not getting any value out of the Light Screen. I could get value out of Thunder Wave later in the game, though. Um, hmm. I don't really want to take a hit on the Ogre Pond or the Urshfu, so I'm going to go here. They can Heavy Slam me for sure. Wild Charge probably might knock me out. So yeah, I could have gone into the Ogre Pond, but given I'm not Horn Leech again, the damage is not permanent. So I think I'm happy with that. Healing lots of damage. I think I'm going to go for... Honestly, another U-turn into the Roaring Moon is tempting. No, I don't think so. I feel like Tailwind comes out here. Terra Fairy is an option, but then I just super lose to the Goldengo. I kind of want a Surging Strike. The Roaring Moon. Uh, that kind of feels right. I feel like they aren't necessarily forced to Terra here, but they might protect. Yeah, I'm going to go Surging Strike into Roaring Moon. They might Breaking Swipe here. I think they're really tempted to go Knock Off. Um, but, I don't know. Hard call. They go Knock Off. So we could have U-turned for a Knockout, actually. Uh, I wonder if Surging Strikes is going to be able to knock them out. Probably not. Um, Tear Water probably would have brought them in Aqua Jet range. Okay, Aqua Jet does a little bit more damage than a single Surging Strike hit. So I think we can knock them out with Aqua Jet. Ah, uh, yeah, they crit me. Okay, that's pretty bad. That's pretty, pretty bad. Okay. Because that Aqua Jet could have meant... Yeah, that's annoying. Okay. That is kind of the game you're playing with screens, though. I led pretty passively. I could have U-turned there, so that's kind of on me. I went for the biggest coverage play and ultimately kind of got got my butt covered for it. Um, Alright. At this point, it feels like Breaking Swipe is a little better for them. 
I can knock off. I think I don't want to take any damage on my Ogre Pawn just yet. Yeah. The problem is Drain Punch. I haven't intimidated their, their guy, actually, but they're going to switch out. Fair enough. Um, Landorus comes out, so I could have gone for a Swords Dance there. Yeah, they're definitely playing better than me here. I didn't ha bring super proactive options against the Roaring Moon, and I'm getting covered pretty aggressively for it. And they have the option for the Ogre Pawn, so they can freely go for knockoff. They go Breaking Swipe, though. Okay. That's good. Um, they haven't Terrored yet, so... <laughs> yeah, Spiky Shield actually covers them. Going for Breaking Swipe there does a bit more damage, so I guess I could have gone Heavy Slam, but the damage is appreciated. Shelter would have been even more appreciated, though. Now I am more or less forced to Terra the Gudra to survive a turn. But if it's not Gold Dango in the back, I think that's fine. This is where Fairy Terra is not excellent for me. Iron Hands, though. Okay. I've already gone for my Terra. They have not. I feel like Shelter is valuable for me here, and honestly, I might have to Terra. Do I have to go for a double protect? Maybe. It just depends on if it's Gold Dango in the back. Hmm. I do have a bit of speed on the Gudra, so I should so I should be outspeeding them. No, do not run. I think I go shelter this turn. I'm tempted to go Terra Fire. Ivy Cudgel. Into the Landorus, truthfully. I do have a light screen up, or a reflect up, let's not forget that. <clears throat> but no Terra is coming out of Orlando, which is kind of interesting. We still have been, not been knocked off, so we do have some healing left. Um, whether Ivy Cudgel knocks out the Lando or not is going to be kind of close, I would expect, at neutral. If I get a crit, I'll definitely do it, but... <clears throat> Can't rely on that. They Stomping Tantrum from the Ogre Pond. Good play, but the Reflect lets me survive that. But obviously it would have been way better to have not even gone for it. Okay. Ivy Cudgel does knock out the Lando. So that's a lot of damage. Drain Punch might knock me out and we do outspeed them but if they KO with Drain Punch I should lose to Golden oh my I'm a pretty bulk <clears throat> I have a bit of bulk on this Ogre Pawn so I think I honestly would have lived that hit so that's like pretty frustrating because if the Golden goes in the back I will just lose to that yeah. If you want to know what the Gudra lifestyle is like, it is this. Just uh, boosting up and then getting crit out of it. Goldango last. Expletive. You hate to see it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, without... Unless... Yeah, there, there's just no way. For y'all's entertainment, I'll see how much body press was going to do, but they pretty much just nasty plot up and I can't beat it. That's so frustrating. Yeah, that, that's enormously frustrating. Like, two crits uh, through my Reflect when I would have lived both hits and they would have been pretty valuable is uh, just annoying. But hey, that's what you invite when you're taking a turn to set up screens. If, you know, stuff can go wrong, you can get crit through it and lose all the value out of that. So you're really banking on those. That is the game we play, as people love to say. I mean, I did... I was pretty passive against the Roaring Moon and I messed up some reads, so can't be overall too frustrated, but I think I was correct in trying to drive towards the Ogre Pawn endgame, but I would just like messed up messed up a couple turns for one. And yeah, I just got crit there. Um, great read though on the Stomping Tantrum. It wasn't exactly a read, I guess they were also covering for me not tearing and just a bunch of stuff, but yeah. The crits were definitely frustrating, but I could have played it a little better with my Urshifu and yeah. So that will do it for our battles today featuring Yusei Matsuno's uh, top two team, second place rather, at the Pokibara Grassroots Tournament in Japan. It was a really competitive tournament. Uh, we did see the team definitely had a lot of strength, so uh, no surprise a player as strong as them were able to take it to second place. If you want to try the team for yourself, I have the Pokipaste with the EV spreads. 
as well as the rental code in the top right if you want to take it on the battle stadium or ladder. If you enjoyed the battles, if you enjoyed the resource provided by the video, please subscribe to the channel, trying to hit 2K in the uh, by the end of the year. And with all that being said, peace, y'all.